I knew he knew it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 148th Travers presented by Naira Betts is West Coast, and we're pleased now to be joined by the winning connections from left to right. Looking up there, we've got Mary and Gary West, as well as uh, winning jockey Mike Smith, assistant trainer Jimmy Barnes. M this is Mike's fourth Travers win, by the way. Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, Mike, usually I like to start with you. If we could just get your impressions of the trip and, uh, and when you decided to go to the lead. <laughs> I, I decided before we went out to the paddock, I got a text from Bob earlier about 20 minutes before he went out and he told me just to ride him however I wanted. And he really made the ever pretty big. <laughs> so that, that made me feel like, okay, I, I got the green light to maybe get a little aggressive. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think there was much pace in there. I'm, I'm sure we all thought that, Jimmy thought that as well. And, and I thought, man, if I can catch a good jump, I'm gonna take advantage of it. I told Gary in the paddock, don't get me surprised if I, <laughs> if I take advantage of a good jump. He said, you just ride him like you want. And you know what? It, it, he was quick enough, he's, he was, he's good enough, uh, and he'd been training the lights out for this, and, and uh, we're just happy that, that uh, he ran the way he ran. Excellent. Jimmy, if we could just get your impressions of the running of the race. Yeah, you know, geez, uh, he was so good in the gate, and uh, Mike just caught a flyer there and was gone, and uh, I said, well, I guess Bob gave him the instructions, gave him the green light, and, uh, you know, we were watching the fractions click off, you know, almost 24, 48. Once I saw the 48, I said, we're good. Nobody was pressing us early. And uh, it looked like he had plenty of horse the whole way. Gary and Mary, congratulations to you both. I, I'd just like to get your thoughts on, on having potentially a, a Breeders' Cup Classic starter now and, and this uh, in impressive performance today. Well, this is a race that we've watched uh, for probably 40 years that we've been in horse racing. And obviously one we've always, you know, would love to have won, and we finally won one. So to be honest with you, the race did not did not uh, unfold the way that I thought it would. I, I fully expected us to be five or six lengths behind going down the back stretch. And Mike came up to me about 15 minutes before the race. He said, you know, there's not a lot of speed in there. And he said, if they give me an easy lead, I'm gonna take it. And I said, Mike, you take whatever they'll give you and go on with it. And it worked out real well. And he rode a hell of a race is all I can tell you. And you said you've been watching this race for 40 years. What's it mean the Travers to you? Uh, Travers probably next, this is truthfully we won the, uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and that was a very exciting thing to do, but next to the Kentucky Derby, this would have to be the most second coveted thing on our racing bucket list. Very good, I wanna check and see if people here have questions, anyone in the media. I think the, the obvious question for Mike now is that everyone's gonna be looking ahead to the Breeders' Cup Classic, and you've got mounts on two of the best horses in the country. Your thoughts on that? I know you're not gonna tell us who you're gonna ride, but just give us your thoughts on being in that position. I'll tell you who he's gonna ride. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, not gonna be our horse, and I fully understand that. We don't know what we're gonna do with our horse yet, is the truth of the matter. It's a really tough, tough bunch of older horses this year, probably the toughest ever, and we'll just enjoy this moment and think about things down the road. But, but I fully would expect yeah. Mike to, uh, to, to ride what I think is probably the best horse in the world. If he didn't do that, I'd have his head examined. Classy perspective from you, Gary. Thanks for that. Mike, do you want to comment on that? No, I thought he answered that very well. Thank you. <laughs> very good Long time. way, you know, you just gotta just, everybody get home, see how things are, and, and it'll all play itself out. Mike, this is a consecutive Travers wins for you and Bob. What is your level of confidence when you ride in a race like this for Bob? Well, when I get to ride for Bob and Jimmy in, in, in this barn, uh, you feel like you just, you just, you just feel like you're Superman. <laughs> you know, you feel like you can go out there, and you know, and, and they give me the rein. They let me, and they they trust me in me that I'm going to make the right decisions. I ain't always going to make them, but on a whole, uh, uh, we we do our best, and and uh, it, it really means a lot when you can go out there and, and and just play play things off the way a race sets up because it's not always the way it is on paper or always the way you're going to, you know, you're going to think it's it's the way it is. Horses stumble, horses get away slow, some break better than others, and so it's nice that that someone trusts you to to go out there and do it, but you know what to do, and that's just adapt to the situations. Mike, did the win on Drafong earlier in the day inform your decision to go out of the gate? <laughs> no, but it, it took that big, big gorilla off our back, you know, I was, we, we were uh, probably been one to, one to five, one to nine in the, the last five or six horses I've ridden. Uh, so winning that race, uh, again, uh, just kind of boosts the confidence level up a little bit. Other questions for these folks? We're going to give Bob Baffert a call and try and get him on the line in a few seconds. Jimmy, where is Bob? Well, I, hope, I would assume he's home on his uh, 
at the couch, the grade one couch, watching. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he'll be checking in soon. Other questions for these guys? Yeah, one more. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm okay here. Um, obviously, he's a very well-bred horse and cost plenty as a yearling. When did, when did Bob tell you that he might be something special? Uh, Bob thought he was a nice horse all along, but in his early training, he, he, he didn't really stand out as a, I didn't, I didn't think the first couple, three races that he ran, to be honest with you, I didn't think we'd be sitting here today having won the Travers. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. We knew he was nice, and then when Mike rode him in the uh, Easy Gore, he, he really kind of woke up on that day. And then he won the Los Alamitos Derby, probably it was a mile and an eighth race. He ran about a mile and a quarter in the race. And so we knew he could run a long distance and he's been progressively getting better. He's been, uh, I've watched the last couple of his breezes with Bob. He's been progressively getting better. He's been working with some really older high caliber stakes horses and working head and head with them. So I thought he had a, you know, a decent shot in here, but you know, you got to remember that you got the winner of the Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont, the first and second finishers of the Haskell, the first and second finishers of the uh, Jim Jim Dandy. I mean, I, I I don't. You have to go back a lot of years in history to see a uh, to see a Travers with this many quality horses in it. Jimmy, can we get some more uh, impressions of you of just West Coast development this year and and how he blossomed this summer? Absolutely. Uh, you know, like uh, Gary said, you know, we took one race at a time, and uh, he, he finally, after the easy goer, it looked like he really woke up. And, uh, you know, there were plans. Bob had spoke a time about running him in the Belmont. Easy goer wasn't sure what to do, and then he cho we chose the easy goer. Take it one step at a time. And then we went back to California, ran in the, the uh, Los Alamitos Derby, and uh, specifically trained him up to this race. So he's developing, he's grown, he's put weight on, he's just turned into a beautiful horse. And Gary already addressed it a little bit, but just your impression representing the barn of, of what might be in store for him the rest of the year. Well, you know, that's all up to Bob and Gary. Uh, you know, I just try to take care of him the best I can. My wife, Dana, rides him, and uh, I know he's always in good hands when she's on him. And, uh, you know, we just, to win this race two years in a row is very special. We got another canoe for Bob. He wants me to pick up last year's canoe. <laughs> Mike, you had so many great years in New York. Just talk about what the Travers means to you. Oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable getting to come back here and, and, and do well. Uh, again, you know, I keep saying how blessed I am, but I truly am. Uh, it's just my age to be riding these kind of horses for these great people. Um, it's, a, it's a dream come true. Uh, I'm going to try and stay as young as I can for about another four or five years, man. I'm having a good time. and. Uh, but it's always an extra special when you come back here. This was my, my first dream was being here. So it's pretty cool when you come back and get to win the Travers. Very good. Other questions for these connections? What made the decision for you to go to the front end? Some fan out there told me, hey, there's no speed in the race. Mike, go to the lead. No, <laughs> no just, just you know, looking at it on paper, Paul, uh, talk to Gary Young. He's a good handicapper. I always like to pick his brain a little bit. And we were talking. and, and uh, he said, man, if you caught a, a, a jump leaving there, what, what do you think? I said, well, if they give me the green light that I can do what I want to do, that's, that's kind of my, my game plan. And, and uh, I just thought it would play out that way. Uh, you know, I thought Always Dreaming wasn't running as well as he'd been running on the lead. They'd probably like to have someone to follow. Uh, other than him, I didn't see a whole lot of speed in there. And I know this colt was fast. And this horse is really getting good right now. And I, I truly don't think you've seen the best of him. I, I think... Believe me, he pulled up. He didn't turn a hair. He'll get a lot out of this, and I think you'll see a horse even step up even, uh, even better. Mrs. West, we haven't heard from you yet. Would you like to make any comments on coming to Saratoga and winning the Midsummer Derby? It was exciting. That's all I can say. And I could hardly walk down the stairs. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions from the folks here before we try and get Bob on the line? Oh, yeah, travel plans for West Coast. Uh, yeah, the horses leave early Monday morning, so they'll be here tomorrow. Leave early Monday morning. Okay, thank you. Are you going to be here, Jimmy? Uh, I leave tomorrow. So. You'll be around in the morning? I'll in the morning? in the morning for a little bit, but be gone early. How early? Early. Okay. 6 a.m. Early. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hope everyone in the press box heard that. you got to be here early if you want to yeah. catch Jimmy Barnes tomorrow morning. Any other questions for these folks? All right, congratulations, everybody, the winning connections.
of the Traverse Stakes. West Coast is your winner. And if everyone wants to hang around, we'll try and get Bob Baffert on the line now. Get home. Okay. Get at the steakhouse. All right. Let's do <laughs> that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Am I supposed to talk to them? No. Stand by. Naj is going to dial out to Mr. Baffert. He is expecting our call. Although he's told me that before and not picked up, so. Hello. Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob, it's Jim Mulvihill. We're here in the press conference after the Travers. How are you doing? Doing a lot better. <laughs> Congratulations on an impressive win. Uh, we just want to get some impressions of the race from you and, and Mike's ride. Right, we got to control the canoe one more year. Sorry, give us that again. We're having trouble hearing you here. I'm just fortunate that we got to control the canoe one more year. <laughs> Control the canoe for one more year. Excellent. And can you talk about, uh, Mike mentioned that you sent him a text earlier today uh, as far as instructions go, or maybe not instructing him, telling him to do whatever he wanted, but just uh, the conversations between you and Mike pre-race. Well, all day I was talking to, I was texting back and forth with, uh, with Gary West. We are talking to Gary West. He's all races, and we are talking about the track and the way he was playing. But I think after Great Fong, Mike, you know, after American Anthem, he didn't really run his race, so I heard about him. Chris Paul would tell us if the track is, you know, to our liking, you know. And after Greg Fong ran, I, I said, you know, you can do whatever you want. But I think the, the, the key to today was that horse, gentleman in the paddock, and he looked great going to the gate. Usually he gets all worked up and hot, and today he's been really schooling and working. He was perfect. He was a saint, and that was the key to this horse today. Excellent. And Bob, you already trained what a lot of people would say is the best dirt horse in the world right now. So uh, what do you do now as far as uh, the plans for both of them for the rest of the year, especially West Coast? But uh, Gary West was talking about uh, perhaps not wanting to face your other top horse. No, I mean, I, I think Gary and I, we, we really didn't have a plan for this horse after this. You know, we, the whole plan was going to get to Travers. And so after that, we'll just sit down. You know, that, we'll let it Gary's been so patient with me, uh, uh, and he's been great. And I, it was, I'm, I'm so happy for him because Gary and Mary, they deserve to win a race like this. I mean, they've, uh, they've always, they buy nothing but the classic type horses, horses that run. They don't buy sprinters, they buy classic horses, and uh, it's just a tough way to go sometimes. But uh, I just, they got, they have a really good one now, and you know, they had one last year, and. And it's just happy to see them, you know, and, and they have stallions, they breed, they, they had a power broker that looked really impressive today in Monmouth Park. So, you know what, they put a lot into the game. And to me, I was more, I was rooting for them training for home. I was rooting for West, I was rooting for the West because he, they deserve a race like this. I, I just wish I would have been there to enjoy it with them. Absolutely. And, and just as far as, just as far as maybe a, Initial thoughts on the rest of the year? Is it too early to get into that? Oh, way too early. I'm just, uh, I'm just in, uh, I'm just flying so high. I mean, I'm just <laughs> so excited. I'm so proud of that. Oh, my horse today, and you know the way Dre Fong ran, and, and but that that West Coast. I mean, what a what a perfectly named horse. You know, it's great name, great horse. So I'm, I'm just happy that we were able to pull it off. Cause, you know, we. It's been a tough summer. You know, we lost a lot of our momentum in uh, in July, so we're just getting it back again. So it was good to, to see the see it turn again. And you, you said you've been thinking about the Travers for a long time, but can you tell us more or pinpoint uh, when you thought that this was a, a top three-year-old and how he blossomed this summer when when this became the goal? Well, we I wanted to run him in the Belmont, but Gary Gary looked at me after. He said, you out of your mind? I don't think he's ready for that. And he was right. He wasn't ready for it. So that's why I had him in the uh, that stake on Belmont Bay. Yeah. And he was still not ready for it. He was still, he was pretty tough to saddle that day, and he was getting a little hot, rambunctious. 
he still ran incredibly well. And then at, at, at uh, Los Alamitos, he still tried to get a little bit. He was getting better. And now we just did a lot of schooling. He's maturing. And when I saw him in the uh, paddock, and going, he looked unbelievable. I mean, I've never seen him look so, he looked great. You could tell he was like a man among boys. Hmm. Now, he looked the part. I mean, he was a specimen when he came in that track. And he's out of a, the breeding, his mother, he's out of a great mare. So it's just coming around. It was just slow coming around. And, but, uh, I mean, there was nobody who was going to beat him today. Bob, I'm going to invite the uh, reporters standing around here to come over and ask a question if they have anything. In the meantime, as long as we got you, can you just give us uh, more thoughts on Drafong? Yeah, Drafong, uh, you know, he just, um, you know, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's sort of, you know, in a way, if he hadn't have uh, done that in the St. Crosby, I probably would have never brought him up to the Forco. Uh, so sometimes things work out for a reason. You know, luckily he didn't get hurt. Mike didn't get hurt that day. It could have been really bad. And uh, he was working, you know, really well coming into this race. So, um, you know, he's just a fast horse. He's a beautiful fast horse. And so, you know, he beat a, he beat a you know, a, a really tough field. You know, mind your biscuits. He didn't run his race today, so you got to, you know, draw lines for his, right? You know, so. You know, that happens, but it, you know, the rest of the field was really a, a tough field. So it was nice to win that, but any time you win at Saratoga on those big days, uh, we love winning on those big days. I mean, it's so important to us, and that's what we, that's what we, you know, we don't run a lot of horses all year long. We don't have a lot of horses, but try to make the, the ones that count, those big days are really important to us. Well put. Any questions for Bob Baffert? Well, Bob, congratulations on your third Travers win, second in a row. Uh, we can't wait to see more from West Coast this year, and uh, we'll look forward to, to talking to you again soon. Congrats. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Bob. All right. That's Bob Baffert, winning trainer of the Travers. Thanks, everybody, for coming down for this. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to come see Pat or Naj, and uh, we'll see you next year.